An online survey done last week by the Straits Times found that people here are more concerned about getting COVID-19 as cases continue to climb. Nearly half of the 1,000 respondents said they've cut back on physical activities while 73% dine out less often. And 72% fear catching the virus compared with 37% from a similar survey conducted in August last year. Respondents were also asked about measures they are most willing to tolerate or live with. When it comes to mandatory mask wearing, 67% of them said they are most willing to put up with it. As for encouraging and or enforcing work from home arrangements, 54% said they are most willing to live with it. Now, on the contrary, respondents are least willing to live with measures that affect their social life, with 50% least willing to put up with dining restrictions in groups of no more than five. And as self-testing becomes more common, the survey found that people don't seem to be keen on this, with 45% saying they are least tolerable towards self-testing. To share more on the survey findings is senior political correspondent Grace Ho. Grace, what did SD hope to find out from this survey? How would the findings help? Well, we wanted to find out how people here are feeling about the pandemic uh, because it's been one and a half years since it started. Um, and there have been various surveys conducted since last year, including one in August last year. But not, since then, we've had restrictions loosening and tightening at so many points. Um, we really wanted to find out how Singaporeans' lives have been affected uh, financially, you know, in terms of their physical and mental health. Uh, what are the sort of restrictions they're still willing to put up with? Uh, and for how long? Uh, and what trade-offs they're prepared to make if it means that everyone can be safer. For example, the survey has a question about how much longer they're willing to put up with uh, dining restrictions or how long are they willing to delay inpatient and outpatient treatment in hospitals. About double the respondents uh, fear getting COVID-19. What are they afraid of specifically, given the expectation is that in endemicity we will contract the disease uh, at one point or another? Yeah, so um, this doubling is relative to a survey done in August last year. Um, the proportion of residents who feel concerned about number of new cases here has doubled to 70% compared to that survey. The proportion who fear catching the virus has also grown from 37% back then to 72% now. So, um, you know, there, there's been this message of endemicity, you know, which has been conveyed on multiple occasions. But I think these concerns come in the wake of a sharp spike in cases here, with the daily number rising to more than 1,000 over the past week. In these surveys, you know, it's not just about clicking on specific responses, like whether you're worried or not worried. So it also asks the respondents to give qualitative comments. And uh, quite a few of the words which came up were things like, you know, uh, phrases, you know, like rising cases, many cases, you know, to prevent spread, to stay safe. So I think uh, the, the recent spike in cases was definitely something that weighed on people's minds. The survey also found that the people are least willing to live with measures that affect their social life, but most willing to put up with rules like mask wearing and working from home. What do those findings suggest to you when it comes to what people are willing to tolerate? Well, people seem to generally accept that they have to wear masks when going out. Um, but you can tell that, you know, that the ones that where they are least willing to tolerate or live with are things which really impact their social life in a visceral way, um, such as limits on the size of household gatherings. 54% you know, said that they're not really willing to tolerate with it. Um, and dining in F&B establishments, that's about half. Um, and curiously enough, self-testing as well, it's 45%. Um, well, on the other hand, you can say that, well, there's a significant proportion, 45%, willing to live with these restrictions for as long as necessary. But, but if you think about the remaining 55%, um, there is a time limit you know, to how long they're willing to put up with it. 36% um, are willing to live with it for another year. And 10% actually say they don't want to live with any more restrictions. So I think what it means is that while there is a high degree of trust you know, in the need for these steps, a high degree of trust in the government, but there could be some fatigue there because clearly when it comes to activities which have a real impact on how people go about their lives, um, there's some unwillingness.
On that point, uh, Grace, of confidence, 53% uh, of respondents say the government has managed the crisis well or very well. Is this a surprise considering that some measures imposed uh, include ones that people are least willing to live with? Well, I think the two things are not mutually exclusive. So on one hand, you have continuing measures which some people find less tolerable to live with. But on the other hand, you know, clearly people have seemed to internalize the government's message that we must make a controlled exit from the pandemic and you know, these are the things we need to do. Um, I think Singaporeans themselves have also internalized their personal responsibility for safe distancing and other measures. Um, I think what's more interesting though is that, you know, as I said uh, earlier, the willingness to leave with these measures is not an unqualified one. So let's say we have a survey a few months down the road, will the proportions of people who are willing to stick with these measures change? Um, are people really sort of psychologically coming to grips with the reality that there could be multiple tapping of the brakes, you know, so to speak? So, uh, for example, on resumption of leisure travel, close to half of people actually say that, yeah, maybe I will go on holiday next year. But what if borders are still mostly closed and that doesn't happen? Um, and then on hospital treatment, you know, you see that 52% are willing to wait for outpatient non-urgent care. But then within that group, um, 50% are willing to wait, you know, between two weeks and three months, but much fewer are willing to do so beyond three months. So I think very much depends on what happens next and how many more uh, rounds of cycling, you know, of tightening of measures uh, people have to go through and their tolerance for that. Thanks, Grace, for the inputs that was senior political correspondent, Grace. So you can read more on the survey at straightstimes.com.